Here we are in the capital of France, Paris, of course, for weekend one of the Rugby World Cup 2007. What an incredible weekend of international rugby it's been. France against Argentina on Friday, Italy against New Zealand, Australia against Japan, England against the United States. Midway through the first weekend of the World Cup, how surprised were you by the opening match? Of course, France's defeat to Argentina. Uh, very surprised. Uh, I thought France would uh, would be too good on the night, uh, but I think the pressure got to them, the expectation got to them, uh, and Argentina were a good enough team to take advantage. Uh, the Argentinian players were saying afterwards they could almost see the fear in the French eyes during the anthems and France to me just looked a team in complete stage fright. Uh, Argentina took advantage and it was just a great great occasion and uh, just set the tournament off on the right foot I think apart from for the host nation. Of course. Now no team has ever won the World Cup having lost a pool match. Do you think that's the end of the road for France or can they no. pick themselves up again? No, not at all. I think it'll be very hard. I mean, psychologically, there could be some scarring there. Uh, they're in a tough group, um, but I think they're good enough to beat Ireland. Um, and I think it'll come down to bonus points, points difference with Namibia and Georgia being in that group as well. Um, I think France will get there, but it may be now in second place. And that possibly means the All Blacks in Cardiff in the quarterfinals. So not great. Yeah. And there are two schools of thought about that possible matchup in, in Cardiff, France against the All Blacks. Some would say they've nothing to lose and they could produce a performance like 99 in the semi-finals. Yes. Or yes. then again, away from Paris against the All Blacks. Yeah. It could be the end of the tournament. Yeah. I, I think if, if there's one team in the world that can actually rip up any form book and just tear a team to shreds, it is France. But I just wonder on the evidence of Friday night whether this whole host nation business has just really got to them and the build up was just so intense for them. But who knows? I mean, they've got good enough players, great players in some areas, uh, to come back and uh, I wouldn't write them off just yet. Okay. And talking of pressure, New Zealand are, of course, under pressure to win the first World Cup in, since the inaugural one in 87. Yeah. yeah. But they were more than impressive against Italy in their opening match. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a, a game they were expected to win, uh, but they did it in some style. And I think, you know, with the All Blacks, as England had four years ago, they have a squad of 30 players who can just interchange with each other, basically. And I don't think there are too many other teams in the tournament with that sort of power. Uh, yeah, great start for them. And, you know, they will take, you know, a lot of stopping. OK. And the only team to have beaten New Zealand this year is, of course, Australia. And how did you feel they played? A slow start against Japan, but then in the second half, yeah, they, they seemed to pick it up. Um, Australia, people, a lot of people have written them off for this tournament, but they have a wonderful World Cup record. And both their World Cup finals victories were in the Northern Hemisphere. So, you know, they're going to be there or thereabouts. Um, Japan, unfortunately, weren't much of a test for them yesterday. Uh, their big game is Wales next Saturday in Cardiff which I think will be one of the real top games of this pool mm -hmm. stage. So, yeah, they're, they're in there, definitely, Australia. Australia as well. And now we turn to the world champions, England, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. not, a, not a great performance against the USA, one could say. No, very, very poor again. I mean, it's unfortunately, it's become a case of the same old story whereby, you know, you expect them to get better game after game and start scoring tries and play with a bit of uh, commitment and enthusiasm and, and energy. And all these things just, just aren't there at the moment. Um, um, America were brave and committed, um, but you know England, frankly, would have been looking for a 50 or 60 point win in that match. It didn't happen. I think they're struggling. Johnny Wilkinson's injured. Phil Vickery may be sighted over a trip in that match. I, I just don't see them getting beyond the quarterfinals unless something miraculous happens. To there, there seemed to be in that match a, a lack of ideas and a lack of leadership from the English team. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would. I mean, we, we saw them in, against France in August, back-to-back warm-up games at Twickenham and in Marseille. They didn't score a try in either game and they just seem to lack the attacking confidence and flair in their game at the moment. They will always have a good set of forwards. That's an England trait. It's an England strength. Uh, but they just aren't good enough, I don't feel, to compete against the very, very top tier of, in this tournament. And 
they have uh, a game in six days' time, five days' time yes. against South Africa. Yes. It's make or break, really, for Brian Ashton's men. A huge game. Um, I mean, on current form, you wouldn't give England too much of a chance. South Africa, you know, who knows? They may get a few injuries from the Samoan match. That may tilt things around in England's favour. But if you were going to put money on that match, you'd probably say South Africa by 15 or 20 points at the moment. So um, today was okay, but um, some people played well, some people played badly. But American played okay, they were quite physical. But um, next week we'll have Johnny Wilkinson back, so hopefully we'll beat South Africa. Who's going to win the championship? Who's going to think, who you think is going to be winning the old cup? No, I think that's uh, maybe the Australian. Okay. Uh, or why not Argentina? Well, that about wraps it up. Uh, do stay with us, of course. We'll have all the latest uh, news, views and stats from this, the 2007 Rugby World Cup being held in France, Scotland and Wales. And, of course, that massive Group A clash, England against South Africa, the 2003 World Cup champions against the 1995 World Cup champions. That's at the Stade de France on Friday. Ah.